So welcome everyone. Like we're all aware, we're going to be talking about types and shadows today. Types and shadows, that's what we're going to be sharing about. And it's a topic I'm very excited about. And just before I begin, I would just like to say, like Pastor Jude and I are looking like we're doing a book review. You know, and imagine <laughs> that the Bible is a book we're reviewing. Mm. And you are going to be asking, okay, so who is the chief protagonist in this book? Mm. You know, because when you write a book, you know, I was thinking this morning, like, if the Bible was a series, then God is a really good character developer. You, he is. He is. You know, he is. It's amazing how there is no order in the scripture that is um, that you should take for granted. Yes. Right. So when when you see some things like looking at the story of creation, you think that oh, he just started creating. No, if you look at the order and the order of dependence and mm. existence of mm. these items that he created, you will know that one needed to show up before the other, mm. right? Mm. And so God in his in his in his infinite beauty and intelligence and grace, he is so ordered that indeed we can say that the scripture from Genesis to Revelation, as we consider as the current Bible, were scripted by the Spirit of God and they were pieced together very mm. deliberately. And that's so that's why tonight, today's experience is just going to be mind-blowing, in my own opinion. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Jude. And, and I agree with Pastor Jude perfectly, because when you think about the, the, the way the scriptures are joined and the character development, even though people did not, the authors didn't meet themselves over the span of several hundred years, and there's such a uniformity, there's mm. such a clarity in, which, in the way God has developed himself through and in men, it means that when we get a chance to open the scriptures, the way we're going to try to do that today, it's always an opportunity to enter into the mind of God and understand God. So I want to encourage you to be present. You know, I know it's virtual, but I want you to be present and I mm. want you to get ready. It's going to be interactive. Mm. So we're looking forward to receiving your questions as we go. I want you to enjoy God. Okay. So the first question will be, why are we talking about types and shadows today? And I just want you to create a sort of background. I was saying before, um, as I was chatting with Pastor Jude, that I was thinking about the Bible this morning because a few weeks ago I was speaking to a writer friend and she writes for an African series, like African magic type series. She was sharing with me how when they go into the writer's room, they give them like um, a character book. Mm. So all the authors have like a character book that they work with. And I was asking her how are the story still interlinked? Like somebody writes episode one and doesn't write again until episode 10. But you see, there's a, there's a head writer. Mm. There's a script editor. So there are people that they develop the characters. They tell you this character is like this. Oh, I see. So they give you the character and then you walk around it. And I was thinking about the scriptures in that light mm. and thinking about how, when we think, begin to think about types and shadows, how there's just one God, but then he's so present across so many characters in the scriptures. And across a diversity of um, generation. Yes. yes. So it doesn't matter that they were born in diff into different circumstances. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The narrative had the flow because the mind of the one who inspired the scripture is one. Yes. So there is a unity of their thought. Mm. You can see their personality, like the argument about who wrote the book of Hebrews, yes. whether it was poor or whether, you know, you, you, you wouldn't miss it because you even see his uh, mannerism mm. in, coming, in, through, yeah. coming through. However, the integrity of the message, the, the, the centrality of it is always, it's always very, very um, assured. So I, 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 I now look at your illustration with the head writer thing and like, hmm, God was a master, God is a master, master head, head, head writer. writer. He is, he is. But hello, it's your show. Uh, I'm, going. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm starting now, okay. I'm starting out very quickly. Um, I hope you can see the slides. Let me know if you can see the slides. Uh, media, I'm having a challenge here. I can't see the slide. But Pastor Jude, just before we launch into the slides and media gives me some confirmation, there's something that you said I was just going to pick on. In the, the context of God as the head writer and head mm. editor, you know, and I think it just comes to speak to our individual lives. How do we embrace, because there's this whole concept of I write the story and I give it to God to edit. So God writes the story and he gives it me to live out. I think that has been the most um, confusing part of being a believer for most people. You see, the journey of coming into God ought to be a journey of discovering who you ought to be mm, in God. Mm. However, because some of us come into God, for the most part, all of us come into God at some point in our lives. Mm. So our soulish realm had a form. Yes. 
we had information there, right? And then we had those information birthed aspirations. Mm. So, I mean, aspirations in themselves are great. However, yeah. the moment we come into God, it becomes a thing where we begin to, you were meant to look at the template and the, and the footprint of God's pattern in our lives mm. based on the revealed word of God. And then it superimposes it on the things we had thought was going to be how our life would play out. Mm. And if any believer is going to, excel in in strength that believer must master this act of getting the picture from god mm. in terms of positionally yes and superimposing it experientially on the life they live on a daily rather than getting your own experiential expectation and placing it before god and asking him to endorse it mm. because mm. he is the master creator he is he is the editor and <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much, Pastor Jude. That was, that was just such a fantastic way to start. Mm -hmm. So today, we're going to be talking about types and shadows. And the concept of types and shadows is speaking about the revelation of Jesus in the Old Testament. And, and so I, I will start first by an introduction from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter, stay, stay on the first slide, please. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible says, the law is a shadow of the good things that were to come in Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm. I want to describe the scriptures and the way God showed it to me as though you have Jesus sitting in the middle, mm. you know, like a bird. Jesus is in the middle. The law is on one side and the prophet is on one side. Mm. And that's the same thing that, that God showed us on the mountain of transfiguration. It was like Jesus was literally there. And then there was, there was the law and the prophet because they are fulfilled in Jesus. Mm. And so when the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, which is our reference scripture for today's um, seminar, it says the law is a shadow of the good things that were to come in Christ. Mm. So everything in the scriptures, which is the law and the prophets before Jesus came, the Old Testament as we know it, is a shadow of the things to come in Christ. So that makes Christ the substance. Mm. What it says is that everything that you see in the substance of Christ has been pre-shadowed in the law. Mm. And so when there was the law, if that was all I had, then that was okay. But now that I have Jesus, Jesus is the full substance. I can look to the shadow to say, oh, this is the fulfillment. But my fulfillment now comes from the substance. Yeah. Okay, so let's go next slide, please. All right, so in introduction, I just wanted to just quickly speak about Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. And that's one reason we're going to be doing what we're doing today. It says, therefore, every scribe, think about every scribe, like every teacher, okay, every student, everyone who is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, is like unto a householder who bringeth out of his treasures things new and old. And I, I sense here that what God is saying to us is that the new is important, the old is also important. The shadow is what gives us a clear appreciation for the substance. And then God wants us to understand that as scribes, the old things of the New Testament are, the, are, are, in, are unfolded in the New Testament. So when we look at the Old Testament, which is what we call the scriptures, which is what we call the law and the prophets, we must get comfort in the fact that they are unveiled. And I'll give us a very small example. So you know when God came to Moses and God said, Moses said, what's your name? And God said, I am that I am. <laughs> and that was what God said to him. That was the revelation that God gave Moses. When Jesus came, Jesus started unveiling more. Mm. I am the resurrection and the life. Mm. I am the bread of life. Mm. As though Jesus was saying, what I showed Moses was a shadow. This is the substance. Now you are equipped to take on the full revelation of who I am. Mm. And so the Bible is saying here, and it's a call to all of us to understand that in God's sight, when we take on Jesus as we become, mm. as we hold on to Jesus in the middle, we are going to have an appreciation of the shadow that God had previously revealed that gives us a sense as though it makes us realize, oh my God, wow, this is the fullness of his glory in his person. The Bible says Jesus is the express image of God's person. Mm. So when we come into this place where we recognize that whatever the Old Testament presented is a shadow, mm. what I'm holding in Jesus is the real substance. This is the answer to all of the promises of the Old Testament. Then it begins to make sense in the fact that I understand now, for instance, that salvation has always been on God's mind. Mm. You know, Pastor Jude, there are people that think that Salvation was plan B because man failed. Because Adam sinned. Mm. And so God had to quickly make up a plan B. Like, Adam sinned. Oh my God, so I have to send my son. And it is so because people don't understand the timelessness of God. Mm. The timeless nature of God. You know, when you say someone does not dwell in time, it is very, very difficult to appreciate when you dwell, dwell in, in time. time. You know, sometimes it makes us feel like, okay, you know, he has a glimpse into what is going to be. 
or he has, you know, a fair idea. A fair idea. <laughs> you know, we, we compare God to a prophet who just sees glimpses, glimpses to foretell mm -hmm. and to foretell. Yeah. You know, but we're talking about the guy who scripted it all. We're talking, about, <laughs> we're talking about the guy who's been there and back. Mm, hallelujah. He's seen the failure of man and made provision for it yes. right yes. from the start. Yes. So in, 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 in truth, understanding the shadows make, will make you to go through the Old Testament without it feeling boring to mm. you. Yeah. And literally everything in the Old Testament, I, I don't want to preempt you. I don't want to preempt you. Go ahead. Please. All right. Thank you, Pastor Jit. So next slide. I think it's really important to begin to think about. So introduction, there are different ways that the Old Testament. So I'm going to show us very clearly. I'm going to go ahead to where Pastor Jude was going to say that, to be very frank, the Old Testament is just a shadow of Jesus. And God's intent for us in interacting with him as we become is that every time we open any of those Old Testament books, our minds and our spirits are open to see Jesus in them. Because now we have the fullness of his spirit. We are spiritual men and we can descend. So we can see the nature of God. We can see grace in the Old Testament. We can see grace at work in the life of Abraham. We can see grace at work in the life of Adam and Eve, even though, oh, God cast them out of the, the garden. We can see the, the, shadow, the, the shadow of Jesus in the substance of what he came to do. And so in terms of how the Old, Old Testament, Testament presents Jesus, Jesus in different, different forms, mm -hmm. the first one is what we call types. Um, and I'll quickly read from Romans chapter 5, verse 18. Just to begin to show us when the Bible talks about types and shadows and just gives us a sense of what God had in mind. I want, you to, I want you to start to approach the scriptures with such a, an excitement. Like Pastor Jude said, there's an excitement that helps you see Jesus is here. I'm looking for Jesus here. So it doesn't feel like, oh, it's just the book of Leviticus or it's just the book of Deuteronomy or it's just one of those law books, right? Okay, so Romans chapter 5 verse 14. And I'll read in the NIV version. And it says, Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, mm. even over those who did not sin by breaking the command as Adam did, who was a pattern of the one to come. Well, when you satire. speak about type, you're speaking about a pattern. So the Bible is saying here that Adam, it was an imperfect pattern of the, of the last Adam, but it was a pattern. And so the Old Testament sometimes presents to us a pattern of Jesus, not the fullness of him, but it can be a type, and that's what we call types. Pastor Jude, do you want to say something? First Corinthians, no, no, go okay. Ahead. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 and 11. I'll also read. So when we speak about types, what are we speaking about? Patterns. They are actual existing people or things that are patterned to reveal to us in part, like Pastor Jude was speaking about seeing in part, like the Old Testament shows us in part. The fullness of Jesus is revealed in substance in the New Testament, right? Mm. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 and 11, I'll quickly read. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 and 11. So when we speak about types and shadows, one of the meanings is a typo in the Greek word, it means a type, a pattern. And, and that's why God is very particular about building according to the pattern. <coughs> because with God, nothing is put there by chance. Everything matters because, and I'll give an example of why everything matters. And, and it's probably a little preemptive, but I'll just share. So for instance, when God said to Moses to speak to the rock, it was a pattern. Moses went ahead to hit the rock the second time. And because the rock was a pattern of Christ, which was who was supposed to die only once, in the fact that Moses disregarded or disobeyed God, and went ahead and hit the rock. He had kind of moved out of the pattern. So when we speak about types and shadows, one of the ways in which God reveals himself in the Old Testament is that he shows us a pattern, a pattern of Jesus, a pattern of Jesus' life. It's not the full glory, it's not the fullness of Christ, but it's a pattern in human form in the Old Testament. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 and 11. I'll read First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 and 11 very quickly. It says, now these things occurred as examples examples so, patterns examples power, types examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did and then i'll read verse 11 the quickly. On her, and then I'll... verse 11 says, says these things happen to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come mm. so we are now in the age where we have the substance but God documented the events of the shadows as examples for us. 
as a pattern as a pattern of oh this is what is going to come this is a this is a small bit of what jesus is going to come to do but you get a sneak peek in the shadow and i think that one of the things that makes me appreciate the scriptures a lot when i think about types and shadows before i used to pastor jude i think pastor jude has something to say <laughs> one of the things that makes me really excited about the scriptures is the fact that when you look at the types and shadows you recognize that you have been in god's plan all along it just affirms to you that the bible says that jesus was slain before the foundation of the world and so what god was doing all through the old testament was just opening the eyes of israel to see small bits and pieces of the fullness of salvation salvation plan is god's only plan and that's why the whole scripture is revolving around jesus because jesus was the bible says you shall call his name jesus why because he will save his people from their sins pastor did you want to say something about types now now imagine that you're about to build um take on a building project and you have a model if you walk into the dome try that tomorrow when you come to church look to your airstream left as you're walking in you will see a model of the freedom center right now that model imagine it sliced up in bits mm, mm, mm. you know for an architect when you're designing in 2d you would do what we, you would do what we call several elevations there is the floor plan okay there is the right elevation mm -hmm. left elevation there is the roof plan now types of christ shown in the old testament will be like those individual elevation a place a, an elevation is a view a single view mm. at the time of a whole model yes sir so just to provide a graphic picture you know when we begin to pick up these individual shadows these individual prototypes you will see that it can only but represent a section, a slice yes. of soteria, of mm, the salvation, salvation, right? Of of the person and the nature of Jesus. So, such that in, in what we're doing today, we are trying to inspire your curiosity mm. as a believer. Yeah. You know, many believers find reading the Old Testament boring. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one time as a teenager, we were asked to go through the scriptures end to end. And uh, God bless her soul. This lady had come to the youth fellowship and became our matron for a season and, and wanted to just engender our love for the word of God. And then she put some price tag to who would go through first. The most boring part was reading the book of Numbers. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. And it was just a chronology of people, their children, yeah. their grandchildren. But... I just about then, I just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And one time I was reading one of the chapters. And then suddenly, it began to form a pattern. pattern. Yes, sir. So even in the description mm. of the temple. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The yes. dimensioning pattern. of everything. Therein lies a pattern mm. for us as believers. So today is actually for you, maybe beginning of a, a series, or we don't know, but for you to know, begin to fan up your hunger to discover Christ in every part of Scripture. Mm. Because in discovering Christ, the true essence is that we discover who we, we are. are. And who we are meant to be here in oh, that. Okay. Let's, let's navigate. I just remember the, the song by Dulce. When I know you, when I find you, I find me. Yeah. And then the more we find God, in the more we yeah. dig deep, deep into just yeah. understanding. Such an inspired who he is. song. Yes, it is. Okay. So we have just talked about types. And Pastor Jude was really graphic with the explanation of, of, of patterns. You know. And so what the Bible does in types is that he shows us it can be a unidimensional portion. So you can see some characters, not the fullness of Christ. Remember, we said it's a shadow. So it's a shadow of the substance. And the shadow is not a complete. You can't, can you hold a shadow? No, you can't. You can't hold on to a shadow. But it kind of tells you that there's, there's a body next door. There's something happening. And so what God did in the Old Testament was to show us like a precursor, like a, a, an announcement that something was coming up and then just prepare our minds for the substance, which is Jesus. Another way you can think about God revealing Jesus in the Old Testament is through the shadows, what we call shadows. And the Greek word is care. And I'll take a scripture from Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, very quickly, just to emphasize what that means. Um, and I hope everyone is following um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, quickly. Mm. It says, 
These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. So, in this context, Paul was speaking about celebration of festivals. You know, in the Jewish time, they had all these ordinations and ordinances. And he was saying to them in verse 17 that mm. these are a shadow of the things that were to come. And it's interesting because each of those ordinances in themselves are like Pastor Jude said, they can, if you look at them, you can see Christ revealed. Because like we said, the whole Old Testament is full of revealing Christ. So another way that God revealed Jesus in the Old Testament as a shadow for us is like, is a shadow of the substance. This is where initially we talked about types. And we said types spoke about patterns. Patterns, patterns, patterns. And Pastor Jude gave us this whole elevation conversation about the way the artist draws up a model. But then when we speak about shadows, the Bible was saying in Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, that all of these ordinances, all of these are but a shadow of the things that were to come. And the reality, however, is found in Christ. And that's why in God's mind, God is not expecting us to hold on to Old Testament ordinances. Mm. Because Old Testament ordinances have now found their substance in Christ. So all the ordinances that Israel had to deal with in the shadow form have been fulfilled in Christ. And that's why Christ was able to say, when they said to him, are you healing the sick on the Sabbath day? Because he was, he was able to say to them, Moses said to you, but I, I say to you, because in Christ there was now the substance, no longer those ordinances. He had now come and become the fulfillment of the law. Mm. Another way that God shows us himself in the Old Testament and, mm. and shows us Jesus is through what we call copies. And then the Greek word for copies is hypodiagma. Like it's a copy. You know, it's not, it's not a type or a pattern. And I'll quickly read a scripture to just emphasize or to just elucidate on what that means. I'll read Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 very quickly. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 says, Okay. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. Hallelujah. Mm. I want us to remember that when God made man, God made man to fellowship with man and to be an extension of him on the earth. So, and that's why God said that he gave the earth to the sons of men. As though God was saying, I'm going to be inside of you, recreating heaven on earth. And that's why when we get born again, God doesn't sweep us away quickly and take us to heaven right away because our, our agenda and our original plan from God's mind was for us to become like him and to become representatives of him on the earth. And so when God was showing Israel and showing us himself in the New Old Testament, he was showing us almost like a copy. This is, what, this is how it is done in heaven. And this is what I want you to bring into substance when I give you my spirit that empowers you to do all I've called you to do. So copies. So sometimes you will see, like, it, will, it may be a pattern. It can be a shadow. It can be a copy. It can also be a sign. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39 talks about signs. And I'll quickly read that before we move on to the next slide. Um, Matthew chapter 12. Verse 39. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39, and I read, He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a miraculous sign, but no, none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was, in, was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And you see, Jesus was speaking to the New Testament church, speaking to me, you and I. And he was saying that I had given Jonah as a sign. Jonah is a sign. It's a type. Because Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, just like Jesus. When we start to think, talk about the types and the shadows and all of that, you'll find out that, like Pastor Jude said, each character that God revealed Jesus through took a part of Jesus' life and, and blew it up for us to see. A part of Jesus' life. But when Jesus came as the substance, he fulfilled all of it. So everything was complete in him. The Bible says that we are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. Jesus is full. So I want you to begin to think about the Old Testament differently as we begin to dig in. I want you to realize that it's like a puzzle that God has hidden very special things he wants you to unveil. So when you're looking at the scripture, you're asking, is there a type here? Is there, is there, is there a shadow here? Is there something that I should be learning? Is there a pattern of Jesus that I should be seeing. Where is Jesus in this scripture? And like Pastor Jude said, even as small a thing as the genealogy, the Holy Spirit opens your mind and your eye to see, oh, oh, there are 40 year gaps. Oh, oh, there's this kind of pattern. And then it ties up to something else and you just find out that suddenly your mind is open. So I hope that that's where we are starting from today. Just understanding that the Old Testament is full of signs and types and shadows and copies. 
and that revealed Jesus, even though it's not full, revealed Jesus in the Old Testament for us to see that he was already in God's mind and God already had a plan for salvation that included us. The first thing I want you to leave here with today is to recognize that you're not a mistake. Your salvation was not an afterthought to God. Your salvation was always in the plan and that's why Jesus is spread all across the Old Testament to give you kind of a premonition as to say, I had thought about you already. Mm. This is like a shadow. Mm. I want you to know that it didn't just happen. Like I had signed it up. I was just waiting for the fullness, for the substance to be delivered. It's like when you receive, um, when you receive a delivery note, even though you haven't received the actual gift, you can tell that the gift is on the way. Mm. You say, oh, I'm expecting the gift. They say it will be delivered by XYZ time. Or you shop for stuff online. And they say, oh, we expect the delivery date to be between 5th and 7th of, of June. Mm -hmm. Even though you haven't seen it, you can kind of start to look forward to it because that delivery note is like a shadow. And what the Old Testament did was to give us a delivery note to say salvation is coming to you in the form of my son, Jesus Christ. I am going to send him in the flesh. And then there are so many prophetic words. So it gives me great joy to just be able to come together so that we just begin to open our minds. And I want you to become more excited about digging into the scriptures yes i want you to become more excited about finding jesus in the scriptures with your friends just open the scripture and say oh my god i didn't see that like that before mm -hmm. next slide please all right so i just want to speak very summarily about characteristics of types and because there's a lot of um if you if you speak to um, bible scholars there's a lot of um, back and forth on what qualifies to be a type so do i just sit down and assume that because uh, he fasted for 40 days, that's the type of Christ. Anybody? So, Pastor Jude, have you fasted for 40 days before? If you fast for 40 days, are you a type of the Christ? <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, for, for some... I am Christ. No, I in the new, new covenant, in the new covenant, just, you I'm are just Christ. Kidding. I agree, Pastor Jude. I'm just kidding. I agree perfectly. <laughs> because when we become, in God's heart, God says we should conform to the image of his son. Mm. So, as we become daily, we are becoming Christ. Mm. And that's why there's a substance now. There's no longer a shadow. We're not holding on to the shadow. We are embracing the Christ and becoming like him. Yeah. But then when we look at the Old Testament, what are the things we can look out for as we study that help us determine, okay, what are types? Number one, they're typically totally rooted in history. So it has to be something that happened actually or something that existed. It's not something that you pick out of the, the sky. Because when God, remember that when Jesus spoke to the Israelites, he always used stuff that they could relate with. It was agrarian. It was the parable of the sower, it was the, the prodigal son, things that they could see. And because God is the same, regardless of the generations, when God was also trying to show himself to Israel in the Old Testament as a shadow, it was stuff that was tangible, things that they could relate with. So it's something that's written in history. Very, very often, the types that God sent, sent in the Old Testament were prophetic in nature. Yeah. They, always po they always point forward to the Messianic time. Do you remember that like, the, the idea of the Old Testament as a shadow was to point to Jesus? And so it was always going to be speaking about what Jesus was going to do, what Jesus was going to be like, how Jesus was going to be treated. Even if at that time, because we didn't have full revelation, we didn't understand it. But now that we have the substance, you will realize that when we start to go through some of the types, it makes sense. Because the shadow was just to show us a prophetic sense. And like Pastor Jude said, it's different prophecies. So one portion is in one person's life. And that person is another person's life. When you put all the types together, you see the substance of Jesus. Number four, number three, they set a purpose in the course of history. So these types, for instance, we take a, any of the types that we're going to look at, you realize that they had their own lives. Their, their lives were written according to God's, God's plan, which is one thing that makes me so I'm excited about the plan of God. Because it means that Pastor Jude, living out his own identity and destiny with God, is fitting into a bigger plan of God. So if Eloha is living out her life according to the plan and the calling of God in her generation, she's fitting into a bigger plan. That God is going to send as an example to somebody else in another generation and say, oh, have you met my servant Jude? Have you met my daughter Eloha? Because when you look at the types, the people that God revealed shadows of Jesus through their lives were living out their own lives in their own generations. Meanwhile, God looked at them and God created this orchestra, orchestra this amazing pattern that shows us Jesus in different forms through all of those generations. Mm. Next is that they edify. You know, there's something very encouraging about recognizing that, that, that the God is in eternity and then this was all in God's plan. Yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but when I read the Old Testament and I see that, oh my God, God had created a, he had created a plan for grace. He had always provided for salvation. It gives me such comfort. Like, 
I am, I am so encouraged and I am so edified. So when you open the scriptures and you begin to see these types and shadows, it gives you a sense of spiritual meaning to mm. say that salvation didn't start with the New Testament, certainly not. Mm. That God's plan was, was conceptualized right from the foundation of the world before, that's what the Bible says, before the world even began. Another thing is that, like Pastor Jude said, a person can be a type at a point. does not mean that they are a type for the whole of their lives. So, for instance, um, um, it's considered that Rebecca um, and her marriage to Isaac, for instance, was like a type of the way Christ and, and the, the church. church. Yeah. But Rebecca went ahead to go and hide her father's idols, right? So, if you think about it, if you think about, about it, is that consistent? Would that be a type? Like, so, I want us to be able to understand that, like Pastor Jude said, it's a portion that shows, oh, this is what Christ wants to show us. So, for instance, if you think about the relationship between Rebecca and Isaac, God was showing us a type of the relationship of Jesus and the church. But did it, did it mean that Rebecca's whole life was a type? Maybe not. Okay, so the, why this is very important, it, it brings to, the, it brings to the, um, the, the caution of idolizing any yes. character in scripture mm. for any reason, whether for types of shadows or for... So, the Bible says that all scriptures... Uh, God breath, God breath, and they are given to us for instruction, for for rebuke, and for all of that. But these characters are all flawed. Yes. Right. And to that extent, we then need to, in our course of understanding, and do maybe a character study on these guys to know when their plots as men began mm. to play. Because I, I was going to tell her that I was going to mention at some point Solomon as a type of Christ. And that brother, <laughs> as amazing as he was, is one of the f most flawed characters that I've had. That had so, such notoriety and still had to indulge himself that much. You know, so to that extent, you know where to pick up the the silhouette of Christ mm. and where to just move on. And you know, there's some things you learn what not to do, right? Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so we do not idolize any of these characters. We do not idolize or begin to build a monument around these experiences, you know, like people would do. We just, it just helps us to appreciate better mm. the substance, which yeah, is Christ, and which is what we are becoming even in our present time. And, and I think that as we begin to navigate to these characters, we'll pace it up. Yeah, yeah. We'll take so, it up. And just to end, Pastor Jesus has already said it, but I just wanted to read the scripture. So the last point is all of the types. The objective is not for us to focus on them, to idolize them, to create a whole monument or a movement around them. They always point to Christ. All of the types always focus on Christ. They're always going to be pointing to the substance. And we'll just quick, I'll quickly read the scripture. Um, because the truth about it is that the Old Testament as, as a whole, if God opens your eyes, you will see that the Old Testament is all about Jesus. It's just in shades and colors that... You know, do you know there are colors that you can't see with your natural eyes? How many of us know that there are some colors that you cannot see with your natural eyes? So imagine... Even the one with natural eyes. Some, some of us need help. Yes, it's My okay. brother, you know. Yes, so. <laughs> so just imagine. Imagine the scriptures. And imagine that God now begins to open your eyes to begin to see in between mm. the lines. Mm. That's what types and shadows does. God begins to open your eyes to see the shadow he hid in it. And so you open the Bible and you're just so excited. Every time you pick it up, oh my God, I never saw that before. Because you see, all of the Old Testament is supposed to point to Jesus. All of the types, at the end of the day, the idea is that the, the shadow must lead us to the substance. Have you ever seen a shadow standing independent of a, of, of a body? Uh, if you saw that, you, you should run away. Honestly, you should be really scared. Because every time there's a shadow, it means that the substance is, at least the substance that you can hold on to is very close by. It may be a different size depending on the time of the day, but the substance will always be there. So I'll quickly read from the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 24, as we move on. Just to show us how the, the, the scriptures all points to Jesus. And you see, Jesus was very, he was really very involved in the way he spoke about it. When he would say, ah, you guys... Have you not read the scriptures when it was spoken concerning me? Like even when Paul went to preach, at, you know, after they received the Holy Spirit, mm. the Bible says he began to expound to them from the scriptures. When Jesus met the disciples on the way to, to, to Emmaus, what did he do? Same thing. It was the scriptures. Same thing. It was the scriptures. So I want you to recognize that 
The scriptures speak about Jesus. The types and shadows speak about Jesus. Ultimately, as a matter of fact, our life should speak about Jesus. We are called, we are Christ-focused. That's the idea. God's idea for eternal life was for us to become one with Christ. For us to become anointed and become. So that's why becoming is such a constant journey. And mm-hmm. last night, Pastor Jude was speaking about it again. That the whole journey of becoming is like embracing that for which Jesus died. And saying, I'm holding on to everything that he died for. One of which is to make me like him. Alright, so I'll quickly read Luke chapter 24 verse 24. That's the email story. And um, for those of us that don't know it. Um, Luke chapter 24 verse 24. And it says... Jesus Christ, my sight. Okay. I'm missing 24, okay. Um, okay. Then, okay, is it 24? Yeah, 24 and 44. So he says, then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just so. This was the, on the road to Emmaus. There were two disciples going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And, and, and Jesus met them on the way. Right, so this was a conversation between Jesus and these two guys, and they said, Ah, some of our companions went to the tomb and they found it just as the women had said, and they did not see him. And in verse 44, he said, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me mm. in the law of Moses, mm. in the prophets, and the Psalms. So Jesus had told his disciples while he was with them. And what makes up the Old Testament? Does anyone want to tell me what's in the Old Testament? The law, right? The prophets and the Psalms and the songs of Solomon and Ecclesiastes and all of them. But the Bible is literally saying that Jesus was telling his disciples what you call the scriptures. All that was spoken concerning me was fulfilled. So you see, at the end of the day, the scriptures all point to Jesus. Next slide. All right, I've said that already. That I want us to establish it and I'm going to read the scriptures quickly. So that it's not because Pastor Eloha said it or Pastor Jude said it. That all the scriptures, the Old Testament, they are focused on Jesus Christ. And so it means that if I'm studying right and I'm opening my eyes by the Spirit of God, God is opening my eyes to see those extra colors that I can't see naturally. You see, and that's why the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians that spiritual things, that, that a natural man cannot understand the things of God because they're spiritually descend. You know why? Because remember when we talked about those layers of colors, mm-hmm. it's the Holy Spirit that opens them to you. When Pastor Jude was talking about reading Leviticus as a numbers as a child, that was the Holy Spirit highlighting, like throwing up and saying, oh, see me here, see me here, see me here. And that's what I want us to begin to desire. Like, God, show me you. Okay? Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. That's it. I like some, there are some, a couple of 316, 316 scriptures I learned when I was younger. <laughs> and this is, this is one of them. I'm going to read today. I'm going to read it um, just so that we can follow. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 50, verses 15 to 16. And it says, And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures. Now let's note that every time they spoke about scriptures in the New Testament, West they were speaking Christ about the Old, the Old Testament. Because at this time, there were no letters. Remember, they hadn't written, Paul hadn't written all of his epistles, right? So he says, And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Mm. Then he goes further to say, All Scripture is God's breath and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, what is it about? Remember, we said before that Paul was saying that these scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So at the end of the day, the shadow that we saw in the Old Testament was pointing towards one thing, salvation in Christ Jesus. I don't know if anybody read what I read. But it says here that through the Holy Scriptures that that are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in In Christ Christ Jesus. Jesus. So even those scriptures... Even though at that time they didn't have a full understanding of Jesus as the Savior, the scriptures that they were reading are only complete now that Jesus has been revealed. Mm. Do we understand? The shadow now has form. Why? Because there's a substance. Why? Because salvation has come. Because Jesus has died. And so the Bible now says salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Luke chapter 24, we already read, where Jesus was telling his disciples that everything that was written concerning me must be fulfilled. And so, when we look at the Old Testament, regardless of how abstract it may sound, from the covenants to the ordinances, God wants us to begin to look inwards and ask him, Lord, show me yourself here. Lord, show me yourself here. So the Lord, the prophet, the Psalms, they had one message, the sufferings of Christ and the glory. 
So when we begin to read the scriptures, we want to read with a hunger that like, Lord, let me help me rediscover you. Help me find you. Even though I'm reading the Old Testament, even the book of Psalms, there's so many Psalms where, where David just had so many encounters of God where he was speaking of the encounters with the substance, even though he was holding on to the shadow. All right, next slide, please. Pastor, I wanted to say something at that point, but before that, I thought we should all just pray in the Spirit for about a minute. Okay. So for those who are online, I just want us all to pray in the Spirit for a, for a minute. Because there is a purpose why, go ahead and pray, because there is a purpose why the Spirit of God has orchestrated this feast for you. And I've been just scanning my spirits. God, <clears throat> what are you doing in this season? Why are you, why are you being so deliberate about us? so that you don't miss it. You don't miss it by any chance. Let the keeper menzi apa etai leku te de kepa lata naga sika kadaru te naga diga dae naga de na naga gasi kike leki mama kalu kadurege and in the church you can begin to declare I have the mind of Christ. I have capacity to assimilate and relate even the revelation words of God. I am able to feast and this table. In the I name of Jesus, I will learn and learn and learn. In the name of Jesus, I receive a little knowledge. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What I wanted to point out is, can I give you just such a unique value proposition for the next few minutes we're going to be spending together? Know that after this message, 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 after this to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. The reason why we come, the reason we come into this kind of setup is the Holy Spirit begins to build navigating structures around us, ways to find ourselves even around the corridors of God's Word that makes the study of God's Word quite interesting mm. and engaging. Yes, sir. You see why it is important then you see I, because i think i'm responding to someone's thoughts why am i here is this the most uh, uh, valuable use of my saturday you, you hear men come and they divide the word of god what you see is an outworking of a structured understanding of the word of god so pastor jerry comes and picks on the story of of solomon and he did deny of the throne mm. and the role that the mother played Bathsheba that was the role of the Holy Spirit now you would think because the reason why I had to use a third party is so that we don't look like we're pointing to ourselves often or not you understand what I'm doing there yeah. now you would think that you would think that oh he just opened the scripture and this thing just jump no it comes as a birth as a result as a consequence of structured navigation mm. it makes these things these building blocks makes you know what to look, look out, out for when you are engaging the scripture so there is insight and revelation that just comes boom like a light bulb but there are others that, and for the most part, that's, that's where 70% of the revelation dwells. Okay. Because the other ones are droplets of God's yeah. messes here and there. But the others, when you navigate the corridors of his purpose, and you see them in patterns mm. and things like this, okay. types and shadows. shadows. So please engage with your spirit and be present. And if you if you want to if you want to um, get more participatory, getting onto the charts without distracting everyone, re-emphasize the things that jump at you. The reason is as you type these things, I discover that when I when I'm preparing for anything or I'm studying, I rewrite my scripture. Mm. So I don't just read the scripture. I I find that by writing them, it stays better in my spirit. spirit. Right. So get get this is deliberate get the value out of this morning by engaging your spirit and your soul in this conversation woman of god we go, we're gonna run now yeah and um, next slide please I've, I've spoken about shadows before i want to quickly just start to look at a couple of the types because i want pastor jude and myself to just open up right so just a few reasons why do we study these types and shadows like i said pastor jude was saying it and it's important for us to know because when you study types and shadows it means that you you begin to appreciate better the plan of god god is a master planner and so you see what happens is when I see the plan of God in the scriptures, 
I'm able to trust God's plan for my life better. Even though I don't really understand it all the time. When I think about it, this is the same God I call my father. Mm. And this God is the one that spawned this kind of organization. You know, God is like, one of my friends called, said that she thinks of God like a mafia king. Mm. Nothing passes his attention. Nothing goes unpunished. If you think about the way he used to deal with the enemies of Israel, <laughs> it will look like he has forgotten. And he will remember, it will just be like a mafia king saying, I never forget his light. And that's how God is jealous over you. So when you read the Old Testament and you see how God was enraged when people treated them badly or they didn't allow them to pass through. And you think about somebody trying to be nasty to you. And then you remember that the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, it's a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble me. Mm. Ah, you mm. become... You become so like you just carry, you're, you become so confident in the plan of God. Why? Because you have seen God's consistency. One of the things that the types and shadows, understanding and studying the Old Testament better with the revelation of Jesus does is that it brings you into a personal understanding of how consistent, how thorough, how unyielding God is concerning you. So when we say reckless love of God that is unyielding and unfailing, you can see how He guided Israel, and you can think about I am the Israel of God. Another thing it does is that it actually gives us examples of how God worked with men. You know, Pastor Jude was saying something that was really very insightful. The scriptures, one of the things I love most about the Bible is that it's, it doesn't pick on, it doesn't pick, pick cherry pick. So it shows you David as a man, but it shows you David as a bad parent. It shows you David as a man that fellowship with God, that had this amazing relationship with God, that, that had this understanding of kingship and priesthood, but he had his flaws. And that's what Pastor Jude was saying. In these types, we are looking for Jesus in the people, not looking for the people to become our Jesus. I don't know if you understand. What we are looking for in the Old Testament is Jesus in the people. Don't make the people your Jesus. So mm. you don't take on a form. Jesus is the perfect one. And another thing it does, it, it makes witnessing interesting. If you meet, there's certain types of people that you are witnessing to, that, you know, you see the way Paul was able to spin the scriptures when he spoke to the church in the mm. Old New Testament. Mm. It was, there was a certain fluidity in which he was going, he would just navigate with what they are familiar with. You have heard, you know. And so when you understand types and shadows, when you come into contact with certain types of people in evangelism, you find out that the Holy Spirit begins to prompt you. There's a certain quality of fluidity, sorry, a certain fluidity in which the gospel is presented, even though it's the New Testament, it's presented with a bias that shows forth God's faithfulness in the old. Perfect. Another reason that, that, that studying types and shadows really does come through as important. It, it helps to build faith. It helps to build faith because you look at all of these people and you see the consistency of God. So beyond confidence, you recognize that I can look to Abraham. And so when you see the scriptures speak about them in the New Testament, you realize this is the substance. Jesus is formed here. Mm. If God could do this through them and now the Holy Spirit indwells me, I can do even more. I think that one of the challenges is that we are not placing a demand on the Spirit of God that we carry. Mm. And so when we read the types and shadows, it brings us into an understanding that whatever they did in the Old Testament was a, was a shadow. Mm. Forget Elijah, Elisha. We have the real deal. And so it should also encourage us to place a demand on it. Next slide, please. All right. So we're going to look at a few of these types and shadows. And this is the exciting part for me because everybody at every season of your life, it depends on what scriptures you're reading and what you're going through, God already has a picture a pictorial representation of Jesus in the Old Testament for you to see. And then the Bible speaks about the brazen serpent in Numbers chapter 27. I'll already paraphrase before I let Pastor Jude jump in. Mm. What happened was that the children of Israel, let's listen to the progression. They complained and they grumbled and they murmured. So they upset God. So let's agree that they sinned. Then God sent snakes, right? So snakes came into the land and snakes were biting them. That was the punishment. And then Moses now cried unto God. And then God said, okay, take one, of, take one of those snakes and lift him up. And anybody that looks at that snake will be healed. So there was, there, was a, there, was, there, was a, there was a people. There was a grievance against God. There was punishment. And then there was God showing mercy, requiring them to do something. But it did not really make sense to look at a, a, a serpent when I was beaten by serpents. It was a simple instruction. Literally, like when the Bible says, except a man be born again. It doesn't really make sense. Nicodemus was asking, why will I go and be born again in my father and mother's womb? To the normal mind, it's not a, an instruction that makes sense. To Israel, to many of them, the, those that were over-intellectual, they thought about it, Moses must be joking. How can I look at a snake? But you see, 
what the Bible was teaching us there in that shadow form was that saving faith in the way God wants us to accept it is like saying that Jesus is lifted up. Mm. I am going to acknowledge that I'm a sinner by acknowledging that I was beaten by a snake. I'm going to acknowledge that this is the only person that can save me and I'm going to look up. And that's why the Bible says if you lift Jesus up, he will draw men to himself. Pastor Jude, do you want to take <laughs> You know, this is a beautiful way to start the, the types and shadow illustration. Um, what the Holy Spirit just said now, I mean, I've never considered it. It's amazing, first of all, yeah. how the Holy Spirit helps in times like this. He said, do you, you know, I've always seen the brazen serpent as Jesus. And he said, the, 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 the serpent, you, you just said it also, is a snake, is a sin. But then he was saying that was Adam. Mm. Mm. So Adam, the Bible says by one man, sin came into the world. Sin came into the world by one man we were all beaten so there was a distribution of, of sin of the sin, sin nature the yes. sin nature so by one man we became vulnerable mm -hmm. to the effect of sin and its consequences yes sir and then you know when israel sinned they didn't all need to sin corporately <laughs> <laughs> They did not all need to sin, but to imagine that there were some innocent people who died out of the disobedience of others, others. right? But God sets up a template of Calvary. Look and leave. Hmm. Just Hallelujah. lift up your eyes and leave. So the act of faith is numbing your intellect mm -hmm. and what you know yeah. and then just narrow your focus on obeying the instruction of yes, God that sir. salvation comes when you behold and you believe yes, that sir. this is the Son of God mm. and this is how sin is taken care of. Yes. This is how the effect, not just sin, not the just the suffering, sin. the effect, the consequence, the death and all that comes from it. So it's not like the snake is just crawling all around you. By gazing at the brazen serpent, saving faith comes that even if it fastens its claws on you. Sickness is a, is a result of the fallen nature. You know, deprivation is a result of the fallen nature. Everything we see that brings about pain and all of that is a result of the fallen nature. So when you look at the the type of the bracing serpent, you are reassured mm. that I'm in the world. Exchange rates all over the place. But there is, a serp there is a brazen serpent to look up to. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you very much, Pastor Jude. I just wanted to mention, just in addition to what Pastor Jude has said, that one of the things that the brazen serpent reminds me of as well is that saving faith is in God alone. There's, there's nothing coming from myself. It's just like when we teach about justification, and we say justification requires no self-efforts. Sanctification requires efforts. But that salvation of your spirit... God has paid the price. It's a free gift. The Bible says salvation came as a free gift from God. And so like Pastor Jude was saying, all it takes is to look in faith and obey the instruction that God has given, even though it doesn't appear to be rational. Mm. And I don't know who I'm speaking to. I sense that God wants me to say this to someone. And this is not about sin. But God is extending a solution to you that doesn't make sense. And God is asking, can you look up and believe? Just obey. Because you see, God does not exist in time. Neither does God exist within the boundaries of our intellect. God is infinite. And, and because of his nature, he's going to ask you to do things that don't make sense. Once you have heard God and you have confirmed by the Spirit, God is saying, stop waiting for it to make sense. Can you look up, believe and do? And so I don't know who that is for, but God wants you to know that that is him. And you are trying to, mm. you are trying to measure God and trying Please to check. It's like God. taking God's word and going to check it with economics. God is not bound by the laws of economics. God is above economics. God is above natural laws. So stop going to try and sound check God's word by the natural laws. Just look and leave. Because if you think about it, I'm beaten by a serpent. How does looking at a serpent restore my health? But that was the instruction. And it was a faith in obeying that brought salvation. All right? So the brazen serpent concept or the type of the Christ is, like Pastor Jude said, is so broad. See how we're still talking about it now and God is still unveiling things to us. Because in our everyday life, God is always going to lift up something for us. 
and say, look and leave. And so, per season of your life, God is going to say, look away from your circumstance. Like on Sunday, Pastor Jesus was telling us, look to Abraham. Because in this season of faith, Abraham provides for us like a template of how we should treat faith without wavering. In another season, God is going to say to you, oh, my child, I want you to look to Nehemiah. I want you to build. You know. All right. So, thank you very much, Pastor Jude. Um, next slide. All right. Moses, this is one of my favorite types. <laughs> I, love, I love Moses so much. Mm. I love Moses because it's, oh, it's, one of the, it's one of the characters that, you know, from even the way he encountered God in the burning bush, in the way he, he led Israel, I just really love him. But then there are so many things that, in shadow form, God had hidden in Moses. Hey, that when we sit now with the Jesus that we know, we'll just be amazed. Oh, my God. How did I not see that earlier? How did I not see this many similarities? So I'm going to take the first few, and then Pastor Jesus is going to jump in in the next slide. Now, if, if you think about Moses, you remember Moses was a child. Mm. He was a child of promise. You remember because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that his mother knew that he was a proper child. And you know, the Bible speaks about Mary, that Mary was not understanding they were bringing gifts to her child. She wondered about the things and kept them in her heart. She knew. That this my child is a proper child. Mm. You know, Moses' mother did not go and announce to the whole of Israel, I have a proper child for a son. My child is very proper. And I don't know who this is for. Like, there's a promise of God, but your mouth cannot keep quiet. I, I just sense that God is saying to you that, <laughs> that some things, he wants you to hold on to it for a season. You know, there's a prayer I used to pray, and I still pray it. I'm like, God, if I'm about to Hezekiah myself out of something you have promised me, please shut my mouth up like Zechariah. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm about to Hezekiah myself out of a blessing that you have given me. Mm. Hezekiah was just so excited. Oh my God. And he opened the temple up and showed strangers everything. And I used to pray, Lord, if my excitement is going to bring me to the place where I, I kind of just want to overtalk and get myself out of the place of your cover, just Zechariah me. Like, make me unable to speak. But yeah, I was just speaking about Moses first. Moses was a proper child. And his, his, his mom knew. So number one, Moses was a child that, that was adopted. Think about the story of the supernatural provision, how Pharaoh's daughter came across Moses, how Moses' older sister chose to oh, watch over him. And then if you think about Jesus as well, Jesus was adopted because Jesus was adopted by Joseph. You recognize that Joseph didn't have to take on responsibility for Jesus like he did. The angel came to him and told him, and he, was, he being a proper man, being a goodly man, chose to not put her away. You know, he had noticed that she was pregnant. But then I think that sometimes, there was something that Pastor Tony said some years ago, and I've never forgotten. He said, we're always talking about good, good men, but we don't really acknowledge the goodness of the man called Joseph. Because we think about the time of Israel in that season, to do what he did, to cover Mary the way he did. Mm. They must have insult. This man must be, a, he must be a big fool. Like, so she just told you that cock and bull story and you believed it. You know, so that's one of the similarities. Both of them were adopted children. Now, Moses left the glory of, of, of the, the house of Pharaoh. He left the glory to, to chase after the will of God. Like, he was like, how can I be staying in this plenty where my people are in suffering and all mm. of that? And the Bible says that Jesus, for the glory that was said before said him, before endured. Him. And he, he, he made himself less than man. Like, he made himself, he that knew no sin became sin for us. The same story, he left his glory. Moses left the, you know, if you think about the pomp and pageantry of the Egyptian palace, Moses left all of that and became, the Jews were slaves. So to be associated with a Jew meant that he was living, is like giving up your passport to the best nation in the world mm. and coming to a nation that has nothing to reckon with and saying, oh, this is where I really belong. <laughs> where people are running away to try and get another passport. Yeah. Right? Okay? So Moses and Jesus, they both escaped. If you think about it, they both escaped from <clears throat> people who were trying to kill them. The Bible says, I was saying to someone yesterday that the Holy Spirit woke Joseph up and said, Joseph, take this child and run. The Holy Spirit could have protected Jesus. But you see, there was already a type. There was already a shadow of Jesus in Moses. I want you to recognize that your life, right? And that's how I was speaking about the mistake that Moses made. God is particular about every detail of your life. And that's why obedience is so important. Your obedience is a pattern in somebody else's life. 
if I obey, if God gives me a word for Pastor Jude and I share with Pastor Jude, it fits into a pattern. It fits into this whole box of God speaking. So when I speak about types, I'm saying, like, Moses had to be taken away into safety. So did Jesus. Next slide, Pastor Jude. So you can take a few of these. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, I, it's really I, bad. I really can see them, but I'll just talk, speak to Moses now as the deliverer. You know, so a point came where Moses had to encounter God, yeah. and then Moses was sent back to Israel. Yes, sir. And his purpose, his sole purpose, was to save them from the jaws of slavery. Mm. Now, when Christ is revealed, the purpose of Christ at every point in time is to sozo us, is to soteria us, Hallelujah. to, to S emancipate S us to completely, us, yeah. severe every ties with slavery. What happened to Israel has never happened in history, will never ever happen in history. They didn't gain independence. They were emancipated. They were, they were extradited. They were collected. And that's the when last. We they were removed far ah. away from every form of slavery. And Moses was a type of Christ in making that happen. Mm. And he did it with just the rod. He didn't push. come there with a the conquering army. Jesus had the legion of angels at his disposal. Peter sliced off the ears of, a, of, a, of a God. Mm, help us now. Yeah, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jesus said, you think if I wanted to summon a legion, mm. he would just take a snap and they will all be here. So Peter, shield your sword. This is not the time to wield the sword of the flesh because it had to take a cross. Mm. That's Moses showed up with a staff. Mm. Jesus went to Calvary on the cross. Oh. And with, with these, he, I don't want to speak to the Red Sea. I don't want to speak to the issue of the parting of the Red Sea and how that is a baptism of a kind. But you will look at the details of the life, the patience, the meekness of Moses. Mm. All that Jesus, the Bible says mm. that he endured the ah, shame. Jesus, he yes. endured the shame. He could have chosen a different death. Mm. He could have had a conversation with the Godhead. You know, there will be blood. But must it be that I will be stripped naked, dragged through the city? But Moses was such a meek man. They would they would cast aspersion on Moses. They would ridicule him. They would Moses would still go back to God. Please don't kill, kill these them. people. Just just one more. Mm. So the, the expression of the mercy, the benevolence, the long suffering oh. of the Godhead mm. was in full, act, a, a full expression and full, Moses. full, full illustration in Moses. And Moses, and finally, I just like to. Moses brought them. He, he, he didn't quite lead them in, mm -hmm. but he took them completely out from the borders and the corridors of of slavery and enslavement. And I see, I see in Moses a Christ shadow that bundles quite a bit. You know, we mm, said there are slices, yes. but Moses mm. was more, more than a slice. Right. It was it was a chunk of the bread. Yeah, it was it was it was because it was an illustration. Let me leave leave that to you as we begin to navigate. I know that a couple of people may have questions, okay. and so we begin to just begin to take this at a pace. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just before we begin to um, as we begin to take questions around up, just a few interesting comments. Like in addition to what Pastor Judah said, um, there's some other similarities about Moses and Jesus. Just like the regular, so beyond the deliverer, which was the major thing about Moses and just the meekness of Christ. But you know, it will interest you to realize that Moses also um, um, saved the woman by the well. I'm not sure you know it. It's on, on the slide. You can check it out. The scriptures are there. Just like Jesus also made the woman by the well in John chapter four. You know, studying the Bible, what it does is that. It kind of just it's so interesting when you begin to see things that you would ordinarily have missed mm. you know and then you think about moses moses also performed signs and wonders like jesus did mm. but one of the things i just wanted to say was moses offered his life you know moses went to tell god god instead of these people these stubborn people take me that was the kind of leader that moses was and it was a shadow of jesus jesus was willing to die and moses was not involved in the scene but god was upset with israel and the Bible says in Exodus chapter 32 that Moses went to God and said, God, have mercy on these people. Like, instead of destroying them, destroying me. And you see, that's such a type of the Christ because when Jesus came, Jesus that knew no sin was made sin for us. Absolutely. And so when you think about this concept, I agree, Pastor Jude, that, that the typology of Moses is quite rich, that there's so much that we can learn from. Next slide, please. 
All right, so for Joseph, Joseph is also another one. Pastor Jude, I'm going to be reading this one because I know that you cannot see, but then I'm also going to start and then I will yield to the Spirit of God to just throw light on it. Yeah, it's I, I like the I like the concept of Joseph because Joseph is one of my my favorite Bible stories. It's, it's a story that I, I can very much relate with when it comes to thinking about just faith for trusting God and waiting on God and then having a promise and the Alpha to Omega moments, just that journey of the process. It's, mm. it's, a, it's, it's he's a character that I find very endearing. But then when I began to look into Joseph's life and I began to see, like Pastor Ju said, so many slices of Jesus, right? So first and foremost, he, Jesus, Jesus had 12 disciples. Joseph had 12 brothers. He was, he actually was, he had, he was living a prophetic life because Jesus' life had been foretold from when he was born, from before he was born. The Bible has started from the book of Isaiah to say that a son shall be born. This will be what his name will be called, you know. And then when you think about it, he was sold for silver, his brother suggested selling him, just like Judas Iscariot suggested selling Jesus. You know, he was cast into a pit only to come out on hot later. When you think about Jesus, you know that all the times that they were looking for Jesus, mm. Jesus had to hand himself over. They could never catch him. Mm. Have you ever thought there's a scripture that says, I can't remember where it is, it says that Jesus just... He slid in, in between them. He just, so when you think about it, that capacity to not be hot. And I want you to, as you become, I want you to recognize that there's that same cover over you. Yesterday we were praying about being in Goshen. I want you to recognize that there's a spiritual principle, there's a hedge that God creates around you. Regardless of what's happening around us, you can say, I am in Goshen of God. The harm around the world will not touch me. You know, you see, Joseph also came into prominence because of obedience. Mm. Mm. You know, the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience from the things that he suffered. Mm. Joseph learned obedience by the process of suffering. He was obeying regardless. And the Bible doesn't give us any account of Joseph being a murmuring guy. He was just joyfully serving, even though the, there was so much that God was laying on his heart to do. But another thing is that he was not recognized by his family until he revealed himself. Mm. You know that Jesus was talking to those two disciples on the way to Emmaus, and they, could not, they did not see no he was one. I don't know how many of you have just been in church and you're just in church, you're just in church, but you haven't really seen the revelation of Jesus. Jesus has not been revealed to you. That's one of the things that we're here to do today. We are going to lay hold of the substance and say, Lord, that I, I may see you. Because you see, Jesus has to open your eye to see him. You know those multicolors, those separate layer colors that we can't see with our natural eyes? The spirit of God inside of us is what gives us the grace to discern God, to discern his body, to discern the gospel. And so Joseph teaches us that when we come to Jesus, even though he's there, he's not commonplace. He has to be revealed to us. The word of God becomes revelatory for us and experiential. Remember when Pastor Jude was talking about positional and experiential? If you hadn't joined earlier, he was saying to us how that you must move from a place where it's a positional thing. You subsume yourself in the experiential, and then it now becomes a cost that you journey on. So Joseph's life is one of those examples of the types of the Christ where, as a shadow, it kind of just showed us that, number one, there's a process. Even for the Son of God, he had, to be he had to turn 12. He had to learn the trade. He had to be an obedient child. He had to go to Jerusalem when it was time. Jesus, God did not cut away all the processes because there was, there was a plan of God to deliver the world. He had to grow. Mm. And so, child of God, even though there's this calling of God on your life, God wants you to grow as well. Mm. And grow and learn obedience. And then yield yourself to him so that, like Joseph, when the time comes, he ca you cannot be revealed. The world will not say, oh my God, where has he been? You see, when you see somebody just come through full of power and full of the Spirit, trust me, like Pastor Jude said, it doesn't happen overnight. There's a whole discipline. There's a whole processing behind where the person is seeking God. And so God is waiting for you to seek for him so that one day he too just throws you up. It just looks like, where has she been all my life? Pastor Jude, Joseph. Interesting. I mean, your list was quite exhaustive. I just want to then bring it to the application. Now, when we look at the life of Joseph, you have already mentioned it, but just to reemphasize it, that there is actually a time frame between first says and, and it came to pass. The glory is already on you, no doubt, when you come into Christ. So, Joseph did not need to become prime minister to get that rainbow, yes, rainbow coat. So, the father, you know, was, gave him the coat it was a positional expression mm. of who Joseph is. Even Not, though even though he wasn't uh, yet manifesting yes. it. Yes. So however, Joseph then began to rant a bit more about it and his heart pride came in and the Lord used the vehicle of that pride. 
to teach him obedience, mm. you know, you would notice that for those times that Joseph submitted to the process of God, the Bible will always say, and the Lord was with him. Mm. And the Lord was, was with him. him. And the Lord was with him. Very critical, very critical aspect of the narrative of our work with God. Mm. And something that Jesus, Jesus will say, I and my father are one. I am my father. Joseph never referenced anyone in obeying that which he felt was the inner calling within his spirit. He would not say, he wouldn't say, how can I? He, he referenced Potiphar at some point, but it was always God first. How can I do this great wickedness mm, against, against God? God. And yes, then he would not probably just mention, mm. I'm my master. Because, of course, the trust that was because of his master was, was something that was strange. He was a slave boy from a foreign country. Now, here, here again is the part that Joseph always did, did had the descent. There's always the descent into, it was said that the prison of, um, the prison of um, Pharaoh was always in a dungeon. Dungeon. Right? It, there was always this, this, and Jesus said that except a corn of wheat falls into the earth, it abides by itself. Yeah. So, Joseph had to go through those pits, Potiphar and prison experience in its triune nature so that he could gain the whole of Israel. Mm. Israel would have been annihilated mm. in the famine that hit the world at the time. Mm -hmm. But one grain of wheat fell through this dark precipice so that he could manifest and he could tell his brothers, go get our father. And he gave them a portion of Egypt. And that's where the whole Goshen story started. Mm. Because indeed it becomes very important that you note that no matter what you are going through, once you have been given the quote, that pronouncement from the Father, that this is your position as a prince, you keep enforcing, you just stay at it. You keep learning, you keep growing, because the, the, the prophecy might tarry, but it will surely come to pass. Mm. Joseph, yeah. we speak about, is some, is, you say it's your favorite character, it should be the favorite character of everybody, <laughs> because you see, in Joseph you see the symbol of how God journeys with because, us, yeah. the reality of the suffering, that, that the fact that you have gotten this quote does not exempt you, you from the from the reality and if you force yourself to stay in the comfort zone the level will throw you out mm. because you, it becomes important therefore that you are built by the things you you experience in this world the bible says you would have tribulation, tribulation. but you do not cheer. be be of good cheer i have overcome what that means is that i have gone ahead of you mm. the consciousness that the lord was with joseph yeah. in the pit in Potiphar's house, mm. the journey uh, with the Ishmaelites to Egypt, the Lord was with Joseph. Mm. That should reassure you. I don't know why we're spending time on that, but Pastor okay. Lord, can we just pray that into our spirit for a bit? Lord, I am not joining through life by myself. I have received the coat of glory. I am a prince. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Therefore, as I journey on a daily basis, I recognize that the Lord is with me and I am with the Lord. I am in the Lord and He is. He me. is with me. In this Therefore, with me. in our time that weeping may endure Jesus, for the I night, the but there is a glory that will be revealed because I joy is a sanctity and morning is coming in, in the season. name of I Jesus. Exactly. Exactly. My soul come to the place of rest. Come to recognize that the Lord is with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you very much, Pastor Jude. Um, okay. So just before we go to the next slide, I just wanted us. Yes. There's, there's just. I want to take a short break so that um, I can just. Pastor Jude and I can take a, a bit of water just before we begin to round up, and then we will start to take questions. So if there are any questions, um, please send your questions through now. Um, but we want. We have a small video to play during the break. So just hold on, and whilst we just get a drink. Thank you.
it has done to us. They've been taking care of is there a problem everyone. Everyone. if the video is not ready. Hello everyone, are you a current DTI student or are you a member of our DTI alumni? I come to you today as a Nehemiah with the charge Arise and Let Us Build. As we are all aware, the Bethesda Child Support Agency has been supporting indigent children from all around Lagos, providing them with free and quality education. Our Bethesda School in Ikota, however, has facilities to provide education for only GSS 1 to GS3. And what this means is that oftentimes these children have finished from GS3 and have returned back to the streets. In this season, I sense that there's a call of God on us to be his finishing hand. We know that God is a God that begins and completes. And I'm calling on you to join with me on a project that I've been to. The task is to get these kids back into school by September. How can you support us? Bethesda is looking to set up SS1, SS2 and SS3 classes for these children and the task is to have them back in school by September. So to do this, we would really like for you to support us by providing a material song that can support for this initiative to be met. So we're looking to you to give on the account number that will scroll across the screen. Can you please make the donations? The, the idea is to have this done and closed up by the end of June. And so we have July and August to put things together and have the kids funded and ready to be back in school in September. I trust that the Lord will help you and bless your heart as you give. Thank you. brought such I don't know if it's just me but it brought such peace and comfort to me right now like just thinking about the fact that I'm not going through life without having an example you know we said that these types and shadows also give us comfort and give us confidence mm. first and foremost that we're not the only ones that are experiencing that's why the Bible mm. is so complete so if you fall into sin you're not the first to sin God forgives if you're going through a trial period like Joseph just be comforted that the presence of God is with you Mm. And I don't know who this is for, you know, I want you to recognize that the presence of God is the most important metric in your life. Mm. Not, not whether you're on the mountain or in the valley. Because mm. the presence of God can be with you in the valley. It will be with you on the mountain top. Human beings are only going to think it's with you because you're on the mountain. Mm. But the mountain top is not what defines the presence of God in your life. The presence mm. of God is with you regardless because it's the blessing of God. Alright? So I just want us to, to be encouraged by the story of Joseph. And like Pastor Jude said, it's such a present story because we are all becoming. And becoming is like being pressed. It's a press. We are being processed and mm. the processing period must be a period where God is bringing out the best of us and, and like Joseph we're coming out of it tried and we are coming into the place of readiness so that when there's a need and the Lord says bring me Sophia they just pick Sophia Sophia is ready but Sophia has been preparing through the process when the king asked for Joseph Joseph was ready but Joseph was not ready by chance Joseph was ready because there was a deliberate process. When Pastor Jude was speaking about the deliberate engagement with the Word and the Spirit, this is the time to be deliberate in your work with God. Deliberate about engaging people of God, engaging in prayer. This is not a time to start prayer meetings and say, nobody will notice if I'm not there. This is a time to recognize that your destiny and heaven are calling upon you to play your part, like Joseph did. You know, if you think about it, nobody would have known if Joseph compromised. But Joseph's relationship with God was important enough for him to say, how can I do this evil against God first? Before he even thought about his master that was, that was physically there. So our allegiance should be to the Spirit of God that is with us everywhere. We should be consistent, committed. You know, once, and especially in this season as we pray as a house, I think it's a time that God is trying to restart many of us. Like he's saying, I want to restart. I want to restart that relationship with you. I want you to come back to me on your knees. And I, and I want you to take advantage of the corporate anointing to move and flow in this place where you are just constantly living a life of commitment to God. So I'm encouraging everyone, and um, I think media is having a challenge with the slides. So maybe what we'll start to do now is start to take questions. Pastor Anne, and then we're open. So Pastor June and I are going to be taking questions around times before we go back to the slide. Any questions you have at all? Do you have any questions? Please, um, please share the questions. Is there, is there a way you would know okay, the question? Can, you can answer yeah. this. No, but then I won't be able to see, because they use webinar mode, Okay. 
Um, are there any questions, moderator? Okay, so yeah, so you can ask. Hello. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. good morning. Yes, it's really been a refreshing time this morning. And um, so going through types and shadows, I just thought to ask, funny enough, I think I got some of the answers towards the end of the conversation, but I just thought to ask as well, um, what is the essence of the shadows? Why don't we just get the real thing from the beginning? Mm. Why does God have to take us through that process to show us, you know, bits and pieces of Christ, you know, through the journey in the Old Testament? Why, why, did, why did he not reveal Christ from the beginning? That's, that's my question. Okay, good question, Professor Jude. Do you want to go first? You go first. <laughs> okay, so Sophia, I'll try, and I'll try to answer your question. So the first thing I want to, I'm going to go back to what happened with Adam, right? So when God made Adam, the Bible said God breathed in Adam, and Adam became a living soul. And so at that point in time, God's plan was Adam had, Adam had a relationship by the Spirit, and Adam was relating with God. But when Adam sinned, that communication channel was broken away. Remember that God is a Spirit. So to discern the things of God, you need to be spiritual. And so imagine that you're trying to explain thermodynamics to a five-year-old. You're going to try to break it down. If you really want to teach properly, you're going to try to break the principle. It will not sound to an adult, it won't sound like thermodynamics, but to the child, that's the best they can understand. So imagine that Israel was in a place where there were natural people that God was trying to cut, that God was trying to show that he had a plan for you, and he was releasing, like Pastor Jude said, he was releasing the dimensions of himself in bits and pieces. Not be, and that's why for us in the New Testament, God has fully revealed Jesus. What we do with the shadows really is for our own edification. Your salvation is not dependent on the Old Testament, but the Old Testament is what fulfilled, is fulfilled in Jesus. So when you read it, what it does, like I said, it gives you joy and comfort and confidence, not because you cannot lay hold to the substance alone. But for Israel, if you look at the way God, it was, God, is, God is a revelational God. So for most of Israel that did not ascend to where Moses was mm. or ascend to where all those select people were, he had to be based on where they were. And they were maybe like, imagine that they were at level one. And maybe you are playing a game. Think about, I don't know, those of you that play Candy Crush, like you are beginner's level. There's a way a, and someone that is a professional player is going to disc explain the game to you, you'll be lost. So imagine that God just wanted, God in his love, wanted to show them himself, but to the degree that they will understand. Right? That, that's why I believe that it was, he was showing also, also, it was also for us, like it was also for us to look back and recognize that God was always there. You know, when you look at the scriptures backwards now and see the form of Jesus, there's such a, for me personally, it gives me such comfort in knowing that there was always a plan. Mm. There was always a plan and I am in that plan. Mm. It was not by chance. And I don't know if it's just you because sometimes I, I met an atheist once that was, really hammering on the fact that if God is all-knowing, why did Jesus become a plan B? He did not know that man was, man was going to man was going to sin. I said, oh, no, you don't understand the, the plan of God. Let, let, me, let me teach you about it. And we had a conversation, and he was really confused towards the end. But you know, you know what to admit. But I just really feel such joy in knowing that, even in even my life, in the way God wrote out salvation, and if it was only me, he would have died, but he would have died from the foundation of the world already. Because God had already seen ahead that Elohim needs salvation and he has sent his son to die. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I'll use to Pastor Jude now. I'm looking at your facial expression if she's looking satisfied so we can move on. You see, because this throws up a lot of things about the nature of God. One of the things that this could throw up is the fact that um, if God is all knowing and all all, all powerful, omni omniscient and omnipotent then he should have fixed the future so that we don't get there. Yes. Now, this is it. It's also like saying that, okay, God could have gone out there and saved all the unsaved, right? Because he's God, you see? But the nature of God puts him, it, it makes him to set boundaries even for himself. You know, he sets boundaries. He, he, he's, he's such a love. He's such a God of love. So imagine, I love the ther thermodynamics thing. You know how you take a child and make the child to learn layer upon layer, right? There is a thought out curriculum, right? Mm. And from stage one, the intent is that it becomes a PhD if he follows through, right? What did you say? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, Sorry, so, Pastor Jude. All right. He, he becomes a PhD holder, mm. but he then Sorry. begins to take, take these things based on his capacity to receive. Mm. If God throws everything he has at man, man does not have the capacity mm, true. to take it at, at a the time. time. So God, in his benevolence and mercy and love, will take man through a trajectory that will make them understand his nature. If you look at the children of Israel and, and being in the wilderness, it was, a three, it was a 40 day journey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were going to walk themselves into a reunion. So he had to navigate them in his love mm. to the extent where they mm. built capacity yes, sir. to occupy that which he has, he has promised brought, them, yeah. promised them, and he's bringing them into. Yes, so many times I speak to believers and I speak to the fact that the breakthrough you are seeking is in your hands. Because the moment you press in, when Joseph was right. He sent the dream to Pharaoh. Mm. Hmm. It's God that works in us both to will, will and, to do. and to do. Hallelujah. Yeah. He probably would have also kept the famine until the man with the answer yes. was positioned right. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. So all we saw about the shadows and the type was God. Imagine he just says to Abraham, you know, Isaac was in several shades a type of Christ. Mm, there was yes. a time where he was a type of Christ being betrothed mm, and married to Rebecca. Mm. There was a time when he was the, the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Abraham was a type that of the father. Showing us the extent he, oh, no. God, yeah. the father, was willing to go for us. Mm. So that when these things become revealed, it is we have a physical uh, match yeah, yes. of the expressions of God's love mm. in that regard. So God in his mercy. And then the absolute answer is that God is God and we are man and he does his <laughs> things his way. And we just don't want to give that answer so it wouldn't leave you confused, <laughs> right? All right then. Okay. okay. So um, I, I also thought to, to, to speak to something before we get the next question. Um, maybe from the audience here or... I think somebody has a question to me. Someone has a question? Yes. Oh. Osaro. Osa. Okay, Osaro, please, you can, you can share your question now. You have the floor. And then someone who, who has the ad, admin would... Um, would is Osaro on this live audience now? Osaro. No, he's um, he's on, online. online. So, so an administrator should just pick up a microphone and read Osaro's question and every other question. Uh, anybody who has a, a back-end administrative um, view should Indeed. just pick, pick up the question and read them. Is he speaking? Or is he speaking out? I think he... I think his intent was for him to speak. He can be unmuted also. He's unmuted. Okay, can he type his question and let's move on. Is there any other question? Is he able to type the question? Why that is being sorted? Let's just pray in the spirit. Let me know when you're... When, when, let, let us know, know when you're ready. Let's just pray. Let's pray in the spirit. 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 You, you know, Jesus. God has brought us into a great season where he is building us layer upon layer, bringing us onto these strange dimensions, equipping us. We pray, we, we, we are exposed to revelation of the word so that we have a full equipping. So when we engage out there, we are not people bereaved of the back-end knowledge. Yes, Zadri Kuperima, Mankima Bolete Giza Baru, Jikata Le Atalaga Baba. I pray for you right now. Everyone online now, Mazaga Dayati. Thank you for new levels. Embudi Dika 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And because we're, 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 we're waiting, I just want to throw in one bonus. You know, I made a commitment earlier. These days, I'm learning to give my words as much as I can remember. You know, I said I was going to talk about Solomon as a time. Oh, yes. You know, Solomon, Jesus was, Jesus referred to himself as the temple. Mm. He said, not one stone will be left, you know, on each, on, on, this, on, on, on this edifice of the temple, but in three days I will rebuild it. Jesus referred to himself as the temple. Solomon was the restorer of the temple. Solomon was a child of promise. Solomon was a child that was not supposed to be entitled to the mm. throne. And his ascending throne was just a measure of God's benevolence. Yeah. He came out of often a very interesting situation. Mm. The circumstance yes, around so around his birth was is quite is quite interesting. Why others would have had legitimate claim on the throne, it was apportioned. Oh, to Solomon. To Solomon. <laughs> Even though he was not deserving. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It was grace apportioned grace. it to Solomon. And the Bible says that the Queen of Sheba yeah. had to come all the okay. way to listen to the wisdom, wisdom that came. You know how Jesus was never hey, trapped by these guys. Yeah. They would gather around him. Ah, oh my these God. These guys ask tough questions. Ah. You know, the climax for it for me was when they brought a coin. Uh, when, they, when, they, when they came to should him and said, taxes? should we pay taxes? Those guys were gangsta. Ah. Right? Should we pay taxes? Now, it was not enough that they were daily feeding Caesar, mm. that there is a leader, mm. a rebellious people. group that is influential mm -hmm. and growing in popularity, popularity that you should clamp down. You know, if you, if you watch most of, I read most of the history, these guys perpetually troubled the rulers, the Roman ru rulers and all of the setup of the time. They were under the tyranny, but when they saw this group growing, they submitted the group to the tyranny of, mm, of the Romans, Romans. And saying, come and do And because it wasn't God's timing, these, these people were not permitted to come to Christ. But the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the rulers of Israel at the time, they did not stop in their engagement to try to trap him. And the level of wisdom. Mm, yes, Duku, I totally, uh, I totally feel you the that. Mm. When Never the, the climax was when they brought a woman at a, in a, caught in adultery. This time, they wanted him not to go against the law. They wanted him to go headlong mm. against the laws of, of Moses. Moses yes. To so invalidate yeah. his claim as being the fulfillment of oh, the law. law. And they said to him, we caught this woman in adultery. What do we do? <laughs> so you came to fulfill the law of Moses. The yes, law of Moses said, that she stone, she don't. stone, stone, heart to death. And the wisdom around which she, he, he navigated her and brought her to salvation, yeah. even at the point of a sentencing, mm. and yet was not seen to be flouting the Lord law. Moses, yes. It reminds us of the one of the major cases recorded against Solomon. Mm. And the prostitutes came. One has slept and asphyxiated the child. Just slept over the child. I wonder what kind of sleep that was. Mm. But there they brought their problem and made it the problem of the king. And at that point, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit alighted on Solomon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Jesus Wisdom. operated in the full dimensions mm, of, of the, the Godhead, Godhead yeah. in, in his bodily, bodily form. form. And Moses was such a classical example of the display of splendor, the beauty, the excellence of the Godhead, and the display of the, the, the more than enough, the sufficiency, the grandeur of God. God has a cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, he's many times because of his person, we do not 
uh, appropriate these things to him. He's the creator of all things. Mm. And Solomon was able to put that in display, like Jesus did, yeah. in redeeming us back to, to himself. himself. I, I, I just feel like going into prayer at this point. I just feel like going into prayer at this point. Mendi kali kabo shaka kali kadi legebe bali gaba bokone desi gaba baruta keke legaba mebu kasha kali baba kanda le diza le kuperi tata luke zuzuburi tukushki men kali kabari tada le kena tiga de la kote ne kasi keke leke boya. In Jesus name we've prayed. Amen. And because you spent the night with us in the wells of revival, we're going to take one more question. As we begin to start just now, woman yeah. of God, I, I hope I'm permitted to, yes, to yes. dive in those zones. And, and, and the Lord will breathe on, on the spirit of Pastor Lohan and show us what to do with types and shadows and on these seasons of engagement. We would, it's not, it's definitely probably not be a one off. We'll probably just trust God for a pattern on how to make this come to stay. So if you, if you felt you have not had enough, do not be worried we would have other opportunities to engage like this so we'll take the question thank you pastor judah and pastor eloho um our also has a question here um, what would you say to those who feel that they've fallen completely out of the plan of god and have probably been replaced <laughs> Lady Nazi Kabau Kaka being replaced. Probably. I like the probability of that. Mm. And now I want to make this as balanced as possible. So that when you hear that he would he could raise up stones to take the place of anybody, God can never be ambushed. No, he can't. God can never be ambushed. So if God has a purpose, he will come to a man and then if he can exercise it in him. He will, and because there is a program and there is a plan, he will seek expression somewhere else. And, 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 but let's talk about the messy, the messy nature oh, of God. God. And that's where I choose to approach this from. Because you see, the, 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 the danger is if we dwell on the, 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 the legitimacy of the fact that you have been, you have been sidelined, you will miss out on the true person that God is. The, the Bible will say is that, it said a, a righteous man will fall, how many times? Seven times. Seven times. But the Lord will, will, will pick him up many times, uh, as many times as he has engaged in those acts of falling now. And this is coming as a direct word to who you and to everyone who's who have that, that thing in their mind. I was speaking with a lady um, yesterday, and we are talking about the effect of sexual sin. And, you know, these are conversations that become a bit tricky sometimes. You know, when we go into the zone of soul ties and how, what it does to your person, you know, and why God says not to go into certain zones. And it's not because he, he, he derives anything by you staying chaste if you're not married or by you staying in the confines of your marriage if, marriage if you are. Uh, it's because majorly of what it takes from you when you engage, right? And we're talking about that and understanding where she was coming from and what she was saved from. She just, she just blotted out, oh God, have mercy. And for me, that is an amazing prayer at that point. It was blind Bartimaeus that said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because the mercy nature of God has the capacity for restoration. Hey, hallelujah. The mercy, I say it again. Hallelujah. The mercy nature of God can yes. go back in time and rewind time. Restoration. The yes. mercy nature of God, the Bible says consigning Job. Everything he lost was restored in a measure. We know Job is a type of Christ, mm. but we won't go into that right now. So I speak to you where you are at right now. You, need, you know, because many times when judgment comes, it, there is a type of it that comes as a conviction from the Holy Ghost. But there is, it is more often than not a, it's, it's a judgment from hell where the devil tells you, you are no good. Why are you even bothering? Just step aside. God has chosen someone else. You're not, you're not useful at this point in time. That is the life from the pit of hell. Because as soon as Zion travels. travailed, as soon yeah. as Zion travailed, 
she brought forth. She brought forth. So it might not be the measure, but you rather would want to limp. You see, limping out of his presence is better than walking straight away from his presence. Oh, Jacob yes. knew it. Jacob said, I had lost time. Serving Laban. I had no business serving Laban because what I was serving for, I was already blessed with. But he said, now that I found out, if you don't restore me to my position, mm. I won't let you go. So I will say to you, cleave to God. Cleave to him. Mary Magdalene, you know what she did? Mm. She broke the alabaster balls. And she said, from this point on, how many people, how many people had the privilege of being in the narrative of the resurrection of Jesus? Mm. She had a first-hand experience. That was a whore, they called her. A prostitute. You see, the, the, everyone has said she had poured out everything. But when you encounter mercy, the narrative is spun around. Mm. Pastor Lord, yeah. you would land up and then would take this to the place of prayer. Because I just feel in my spirit that that question has just triggered something it's prophetical so in the atmosphere. Just, I, I, I'm just totally aligned with what Pastor Jude said. I think that the only thing to add and is just to remind us of the, the heart of God. And I think that sometimes we look at God, like I like to say, from the heart of the culture that's around us, that's a little unforgiving, that's very performative. But that's not the heart of the Father. If he's working in us to will and do what pleases him, it means that his mercy is going to triumph over judgment even when we do wrong. So I just want us to lean on the mercy of God this morning and, and recognize that the restorative capacity of God. You know, when the Bible speaks about restoration in the book of Joel, he says he will restore what the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar have eaten. I don't know if you have ever seen a place where the caterpillar ravaged. When those, when those locusts ravage a farm, nothing is left. Nothing. And God speaks restoration into that kind of circumstance. So what is it about the call of God over your life or your destiny that God cannot restore? I think that we have limited God so much in the way we see him. We think that he's holding a black book, taking notes, and he's unforgiving like men are wants to do. Men will say, man, this person has failed me too many times over. I'm not giving them any more chances. But that's not God. Because it's God inside of us that pleases himself. So God giving up on you is giving up on himself because when God, <laughs> God, God, God says that I am pleased with my mm. son, behold, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, then that son now resides in you by the spirit, which is why he says, I am walking in you to will and do what pleases me. So if you think about God giving up on you, is in, well, literally yeah, saying that God that is saying that I in you cannot do what pleases me anymore. That's, that's, such, that's, such, that's the voice of the accuser. He's just accusing you and trying to drift, take you farther and farther away from God. Just pause and let's, let's go back home. And you see, the thing about the love of the Father is that you don't need to be perfect to come home. The prodigal son was all messy. The Father ran out to reach him. He didn't even wait for him to come and say, oh, stay out there. Servants, come and wash him down. You know, take him. No. So even if you, it's the voice of the accuser, even if your own conscience is accusing you, the Bible says the word of God is greater than your heart. If your heart condemns you, the word of God is greater than your heart. The word of God is speaking mercy over just judgment today, like Pastor Jude said. So I just want us to begin to pray. The mercy of God is speaking. The mercy of God is speaking over your destiny. The mercy of God is speaking over the call of God in your life. The mercy of God is speaking over your journey. God is saying it's not over yet. God is saying I am you. I am holding your hand. Hey, the Bible says that as soon as Zion is she brought forth. It will come to the season of birthday. God is saying it's time to push. It's time to push. And the enemy is telling you guys, and I say, no more, devil. No more, devil. I hear only the voice of the Father. I hear only the heart of the Father. I am aligned with God. I am one with God. I enter into the Joseph Covenant. I walk into this process, and I recognize that God is a walking in my life. I may not understand it. I may not understand the valley moment. I may not understand the downside. But God has called me. God has put a coat upon me. Whether I'm living at the palace yet, I have a I am called of God. The hand of God is upon my life. Begin to cast down every voice of the accuser. The Bible says that we cast down every high thing that is exalting itself against the knowledge of Christ. Every voice that is exalting itself against the knowledge of Christ in your life. Every voice that is exalting itself against the call of God in your life. Begin to cast it down this morning and begin to exalt the call of God. Exalt the counsel of God. Exalt the voice of God. Declare that the Lord 
God is like Someone in this meeting, uh, a season in your life where you had to take out a pregnancy and it has hung over you mm. as a condemnatory judgment. Mm. The Lord is saying that the handwriting of ordinance has been blotted out. Hallelujah. And that, that you that existed in that zone, it was it was that you was not repaired. Your spirit was was exchanged. So it is no longer you that lives. Christ, Christ that lives, lives in you. you. Hallelujah. So you commit to a process of renewal of the mind. Yes. Telling yes, yourself, yes. I am the chosen Thank you, one. Jesus. I am the sent Thank one. You, Jesus. I am yes. the sanctified Thank one. You, Jesus. I am the liberated one. And the the mess the, the void the blood of Jesus, even Christ out better than the blood, blood of, of Abel. Abel. Hallelujah. Therefore, every blood spillage that has sort of hung over you, mm. even in these number of years, it seems like you're mm. not moved on from it. The subtle times your quiet moment you begin to hear the cry of a child mm. in your sleep and that's the accuser that's not the voice of god mm. you see god cannot be tempted of evil mm. he doesn't yeah. he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't he convicts of sin he doesn't condemn the the individual he brings you to the place of realization that you ought not to be part of this and then you, which causes the transformation but when you hear the voice repeatedly that is the ministry of the accuser of the brethren and I shut every voice, every negative voice, Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I pray for someone here who is, inter who is attending an interview this week. I pray that you, as you sit in that place, yes. you will see yourself seated in Christ in the heavenly places. Amen. And you will go for the job because I feel that is God's purpose mm. and will for you in this season. You feel that job is beneath you because of the qualifications you have. Hear me, child of God. That's your Potiphar's experience. As you stay on it, Lord is going to cause a transformation in your career story. Amen. Because this season you have committed to seeking the Lord. Amen. Oh, the Lord is just speaking to how he's opening up several portals of revelation yes. to as many who have been inspired to study more mm. of the scriptures. And he said as you engage from today, you begin to see the scripture in patterns. Mm. And you, you, you saw one of you, you just admire the fluidity and the beauty of which the interchange between Pastor Elohim and myself, you know, have played out. And it's beyond the admiration. What you are sensing right now as I, as I pray for you, is the is the beginning of the Holy Spirit, the capacity mm. to begin to diligently study the word yeah. and revelation comes to you as you do so. Mm. Not just for you to live a good life, but for you to pen down these things in books and in, 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 in on social media and to speak to people about them because the Lord is making your tongue like the pen of a radio writer. Amen. He's giving you revelation in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. So Lord, I don't know whether you've gotten it in this I, I, I have a witness for the person that was just admiring. You know, mm. and, and the Holy Spirit is so amazing. Mm. And so I'm just going to, I'm just confirming the word that God gave Pastor Jude. And then there's a word for someone, you're having challenges in your office. Um, you're having challenges in your office and the Lord has given you like a solution. And, and, and I, I'm not sure if it's the same person that God gave a word to before to say, look, look up. And the solution doesn't appear to make sense. It's not a very intellectual solution. But mm. God is saying, obey. Mm. You know, God is saying that therein lies the victory. The, the, the submission of your own desire to his desire for his He's going to bring you out of this trouble, but you need to yield to him and yield to what he's asking you to do, right? I, I also want you to be a witness for someone that is really not the same person Pastor Jude um, spoke about again. This person is someone that has totally just looked and said, this cannot be me. Like, these scriptures, I've tried reading the Bible, I always just get lost. And then God is saying to you to lean, to lean in and to say that, how dare you say it cannot be you? Because the spirit inside of you is the spirit of revelation, you know? And so God is saying that you should trust him with the word. Trust him with the word and stay with the word. That you should not give up. That he's able to open the scriptures to you like he opens to the disciples on the way to Emmaus. And I can sense that God is speaking to you even now. That you should not give up on the word of God. That you should trust that he can open your eyes to the scriptures as well. Hallelujah. So just, just for someone that is giving up on the word. And then the person that really was just admiring the gift. God has, there's a plan of God for you. God wants to give you books. And God wants to give you materials to write. God wants to open your minds to his word by himself. So just yield to God as well, like Pastor Jude said. Thank you, Jesus. 
I want to pray for you. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. Ima kenende li pala tsusa kabaya tilo kadis le kuda kata ba ina nanga gani mama gadi ne kete le mama gadi obo shukule gede. In the depth of the world, this is the smallest you will ever be in your life. From this point onwards, you begin to mature into the things and the purpose of God for your life, and you begin to feel the office that God has called you to occupy in the church and in the world. You will go out there and you be a full expression of the Godhead, even as you live your life in purpose Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray for the DTI, the Don't Training Institute. I ask that the Spirit of God, that this revival that has been found up in this in this sphere, that it will catch up even with the entire Amen. church, it will catch up even with the entire Amen. body of Christ. As you, everyone who is part of this revival, you are shot out like arrows in the hands of a mighty Amen. man to wreck mayhem to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. This is the victory that overcomes yes. even our faith. Yes. And today we join our face together to say it is well with Amen. you. It is well with your going Amen. out. It is well with your coming Amen. in. The hand of God is upon you. Amen. You are blessed in the city. Amen. You are blessed in the field. Amen. You are blessed in your going out. Amen. And you are, you are coming out back there. Yes, Lord peace. Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. 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 I celebrate you, woman of God. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Pastor Judy. It was so good to have you. So good. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I pray that the Lord gives you. You know, can we just pray for Pastor Jude, guys, um, before we mm. shut down? You know, I just want us to... The Bible says that they that labor in the world are, dub, are worthy of double honor. Pastor Jude does not just labor in the world. Pastor Jude labors in administration. Pastor Jude labors in the place of pastoring. And him being here is such a sacrifice because he was up until four, four or five years today just ministering in a world of revival. I want you to begin to speak over him. Begin to declare about his life. <laughs> that he comes into such a fresh season that the Lord graces him with fresh graces. Begin to declare that the Lord creates a head round about him. Pray for wisdom. You see that wisdom of Solomon. That wisdom that nobody could gain say. That the Lord increases his wisdom. That he comes into wisdom that is like the age. That the kind of wisdom that people cannot understand. Begin to declare concerning his life. Every area of his life. Ministry, career, marriage. In every area he, he begins to encounter the fullness of God's blessing. Explosions on every side. That the Lord that is a faithful rewarder. For the service that he does, for the sonship that he brings, and for the for the work that he has carried on his head like this, that he will never lack for any good thing. The Bible says, No good thing does God withhold from them that walk uprightly. Begin to declare good things upon him. Things that money can buy, things that money cannot buy. Ah, in blessing, God has blessed him. In multiplying, God has multiplied him. Begin to bless the work of God in his hands, that the work of God will increase. Begin to declare that the revival is bursting forth, that God's plan. That the plan that God has, has downloaded to him, God is bringing it to come to pass. There's such a fresh fire and a fresh grace from the work that God has given him to do. Begin to declare in the name of God, the Lord protects him Amen. on every side. Amen. That the Lord sustains his hand. He will Amen. not be weary, he will not be burnt out. That he receives grace and help and support in every way. Just bless him, bless him, children of God. Begin to bless him. I know that you have been blessed by his ministry and you have been blessed by his life. Begin to bless him, bless him in words, bless him by the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Let the Lord give you words. Bless his life. Fresh dimensions of the world. We also fresh expressions of the giftings of the Spirit. Legacy dynamism in all its workings. Faith, oh. Faith that is unstoppable, Rabaka Satele, Robosi, you have become a first partaker of all that the Lord has committed to your hand in this season. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying. Bye, everyone. See you all tomorrow in class. God bless you. Amen.